My name is Vahid Chitsos, part of the Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here this morning with us. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody and let us know where you're coming from. Okay, well, my name is Alex, and I am in California, Bakersfield, California, so just a few hours from you. You're down the block from us, Will. Yeah. <laughs> Bakersfield is a cool place. You can get nice houses for a really cheap price, um, yeah. way lower cost than what it costs you in L.A., so oh, yeah. I envy you guys. <laughs> <laughs> so let's dive into it thinking go rich when did you start how did you start oh wow okay so this was one of my first books so what happened to me was it kind of um was a spiral on my own part so i went through my own weight loss transformation and i documented it back in 2012 before it was like all the rage to like document your fitness journey and eventually about a few months after that I started my own business from it. And so I started a gym out of my garage and I was like, oh my gosh, I think I need to figure out how to do this business thing. <laughs> and so I went to Barnes and Nobles and I mean, how can you resist a book that says think and grow rich? I was like, perfect. Um, this is what I need. So I picked it up and it was one of my first personal development books along with a couple of others. And it, you know, sparked a lot for me at that time as, you know, somebody that went through my own weight loss journey and then was teaching um, about, you know, mentally um, preparing yourself and persistence and going for what you want. When I read this book for the first time, I was like, wow, this is everything that I teach, you know, and I, I didn't realize um, that this book was as epic as it is. And so... Um, that's the first time that I actually read it. That is awesome. So you literally went to Barnes and Noble and you picked it up yourself? Yes. <laughs> that is, you are a crazy woman. You are crazy. <laughs> Nobody does that. Well, I met my wife in Barnes and Noble while I was reading Thinking Go Rich. But I knew about Thinking Go Rich before I met my wife. So that was wow. cool. You said Barnes and Noble. I just remembered Barnes and Noble. And that was six years ago. Yep. That is so cool. So what are some of the principles that you utilize the most right now in your business? What are the top two? Okay, so the top two would be um, the mastermind concept and then the persistence concept. And so with this book, it is, well, I like to call it like the original blueprint um, of transforming you know, your life. And so there's so many concepts in this book. And I really feel like, like he says, you have to read it more than once, but not just read it. You have to listen to it and then go back and read it again. And so um, right now I'm in the mastermind chapter, which is almost like the, the last, you know, principle in his book. And I started my first one. The first time I read it was back in 2012-ish. And so I'm now on the last principle. And so I'm part of a couple mastermind groups. I surround myself with people that um, – are you know just wiser than I am I want to, I don't want to be the smartest person in the room and so um, being part of mastermind groups has allowed me to actually open up my per, you know perspective of things and really tap into my full potential that I didn't even realize I had but seeing these people and being around them have actually um, motivated me more to be like if they can do it I can totally do it and then they're holding me accountable um, and making sure that I'm achieving these things, which is what a mastermind, you know, originally was. It's an accountability group. And so he went and he had his colleagues who were doing what he, you know, mm. he was doing. And, you know, they were all kind of on the same playing field and they were holding each other accountable and really pushing each other to, you know, tap into really where they could be, but didn't really see themselves as. That is so cool. So here's my question. Based on your professional experience, is losing weight more have to do with the gym or more has to do with the food or has it to do more with the mindset and, and the, 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 the thoughts that you have of yourself in your mind? What are the key elements? Because I see that all the time. Obviously, I am fat and I don't go to gym. So I kind of look at the people that are healthy, doing this, doing all that stuff. I feel like I'm healthy. I don't get sick. I don't do all that crazy stuff. I don't eat everything, but I'm a... I like food. I like I like stuff, right? But I noticed that so many people, I don't want to say they're overweight, but they're almost in the same category as I am. But I see them like really 
go through a lot of struggles. Like they watch the calories, they eat veg, like they do all that stuff. But I'm not seeing it from outside for someone that puts themselves through that process to have the shape that it's equivalent to it. I don't know if I'm delivering the message right. It doesn't no, make any. So which part is it that's missing? What am I missing? You're missing the fact that it's a tripod. Um, a okay. tripod can't stand if it's missing a leg. True. So you have to have all the pieces to actually make the tripod stand. So you have to have the training that correlates with the nutrition, and then you have to have the mindset of the persistence of I can do this, and I am capable of doing this. And a matter of fact, it's a privilege for me to be able to do this and be grateful for it and fall in love with the process instead of seeing it as a chore. And so as you, like he does in his book, he takes it one principle at a time. So what I teach is taking one, you know, tripod leg at a time. So maybe you do tackle your nutrition. And then once you, you know, got a hold of that, then you move on to incorporating that training. And then once you got that, you have to understand that in order for you to keep the results that you got, you have to continue doing what you've been doing to get those results. So it's about creating that mindset of, am I happy doing this? Is this going to, can I do this for life? And so you want to make sure that the mindset matches the training and the nutrition. And if you are not happy mentally with what you are doing, then that is not for you. There are so many ways to lose weight. There are so many ways to build muscle. There are so many ways to eat nowadays. And it's about finding what works best for you. And sometimes you have to go through those failures to actually get to that, you know, top of the mountain. And I say at least try something for 60 to 90 days. So if you're going to go keto, go keto for 60 to 90 days. Are you happy? Do you have the energy? Do you have what you need to make you happy and feel fulfilled and know that you can do this for the rest of your life? You do? Perfect. Keto's for you. If you don't, then you need to actually go and try something else. Maybe carb cycling. Try that for 60 to 90 days. Maybe that's not for you. Maybe just flexible dieting's for you. And then same goes with fitness. Are you, you know, the type of person that likes to go to the gym? Are you the type of person that likes to work out at home? Are you the type of person that likes to be in a boot camp? Large groups, small groups, one-on-one. -on -one. So try each thing one step at a time for 60 to 90 days before you give up um, and decide if it is for you. So that is, that is awesome. And that goes true for thinking Grow Rich. If you're going to pick up the book and read it, you should give it 30, 60, 90 days at least because this is not a novel you read one yeah. time and be done with it. You know, exactly. it's been taking you seven years and you get into the last principle. And that's exactly what I recommend to people. When people read the book too fast, I yeah. question it. So I don't mind. As a matter of fact, I highly recommend it for you to read the entire book, find out what all the principles are, so you have the key elements, but then there is nothing wrong of you sticking to one principle for one year. So if there's like 12, 13, 14 principles, depending on which version of the book that you get, or if you get a lot of success, it's okay. Let it take 10 years for you to master all of that. But the slower you go, I think the more meaningful it is and the better implementation you can do versus me trying to do the gym, the diet, the mindset, all of it at the same time. And if I'm not used to it, meaning I haven't acclimated myself, my hours, my all that to it, I think it's a shock. And I think it just disturbs the system too much where yeah. you're more receptive to quitting. Yes. So I have this concept. It's called the tortoise and the hare concept. We're taught this as children, right? This, this fairy tale story about the hare um, coming to the tortoise and saying, I can beat you in the race. I'll race you. Let's do this. And the tortoise is like, you can't beat me. And so they go into a race together, right? It's that competition between each other. The hare has this confidence and, you know, he has the success to back it up. He's won, won races. He's fast, just genetically. He has everything that he needs to actually win the race, except the focus. And that's where the tortoise comes in. The tortoise wins the race because it's about persistence. It's about focus. It's not about getting there the fastest. It's about keeping on the path that he has intended for himself. And so as the hare is hanging out with the friends and going and having lunch and taking a nap, the tortoise is still slow paced towards his goal and becomes victorious because of it. And so that's what I feel like this book is. You know, people have to understand that you only retain 10% of what you read. 
So the first time you read it is like going to school and it's like seeing the syllabus. You know what's to come, but you haven't actually started to apply the concept. So then I, I recommend listening to the audio as your second because then you retain 30 to 40% of what you see and you hear. So now you're not only, okay, I get these concepts, this is what we're gonna be doing, okay, I understand that now. But we retain 90% of what we see, hear, and do. So it's one thing to actually read the book, but it's another thing to actually implement the principles that are in this book. And so I have this saying, take it one day, one meal, one workout at a time. Same thing with the book. You need to take it one day, one principle, and one victory at a time. I agree with that 100%. My question is this. It's, it's easy to, to, to say that, and, <laughs> and implementation is a different story. So here's my question. How do you overcome that first 30 days of you not getting results? And that happens in the business. That's why I always come back to fitness. And I think fitness is the best example that we can use to replicate and copy and deliver message in business. When you go to the gym the first 30 days, I've done that multiple times, you absolutely see no results, like zero, zilch. Internally, things are changing. That's the same thing with business. Now, that 30 days could be three months, th 30 months. It could be three years that internally a lot of things are cooking, things are happening, but from outside surface, you may not see it. So how do you overcome that where individuals judge the book by its cover and the first 30 days? They're like, hey, you've been going to gym for 30 days. Nothing's changed. That negative yeah. thought that comes in, yes, they're right. The 30 days, they haven't seen Outside, there's nothing. So how do you overcome that? Here's what I believe. You can't change what you don't track. Okay? So oh. in those 30 days, you are technically making changes. But because you didn't either take your before photo, you didn't weigh in, you didn't give yourself a starting point of where you are to see where you are now in 30 days. So how can you measure what you're not tracking? So, so you think what, tracking is very, very important in, so, in anything. Obviously, in business, is very, very important. So important, which is why, and I have it here, when I found the workbook, game changed. The game changed because now I was able to track what I wanted. Granted, I was already doing that on a piece of paper, but having a home for it made it that much more for me to, okay, implement. Okay, so this is my next step. This is my next step. And so the change is happening, but we are so hard on ourselves. We are our hardest critics. So I'll give this example. With nutrition, you will go five days, right? We'll go Monday through Friday, hardcore, all good, 100%, eat healthy, eat clean, right? Come the weekend, we're drinking, we're eating, we're partying. And then come Monday, we're like, oh, I ruined it, right? What? You did 80% positive you did 80 percent good and 20 percent negative and yet you're focused on the 20 percent negative but if you were to grade this in school you got an 80 percent which means you passed but the, right. the mind is going towards the 20 percent so if we can shift that mindset from actually looking at that 20 percent that negative that defeat and shift it to looking at the 80 percent positive that we did we're going to have that as a motivator so that's your motivation so one is a tracking, I can now visually see it. It is now real. It is now out in the world and not in here. And then two, now I'm focused on the positivity, what I'm actually doing right instead of what I'm doing wrong. So because I'm focused on what I'm doing right, I'm going to do more of what's right than what I was doing wrong. I agree with that 100%. I see your point clearly. And so here's my question. <laughs> So you're saying 80% is focused on the positive because you did 80%. But I don't know what kind of people you you train because I don't get to work, party, do this. I, I, I get to work on weekends. I get to work. So there's no partying, there's no drinking, none of that stuff. So if I was that example, I'd be doing 95% right, 5% I'd be sleeping, so then there wouldn't be any mistakes. There you go. You got an A-plus student right here. <laughs> But so, but you do give people a cheat day. You do give people a, a day where they go freestyle or you still have limitations. So here's what I believe. I don't believe in cheat days. 
I don't believe in um, rewarding yourself with food because I am somebody who comes from an over, I used to be 200 pounds. So when you actually indulge that way, so say you restrict yourself for so long and then you allow yourself to indulge, that indulgent, um, you don't really build the strength. And regardless how long, you know, I lost my weight 10 years ago, um, that mindset is still there and I still have to fight every day. And so I don't believe in a cheat meal because I feel like um, it's allowing yourself to go back into a bad habit. And so instead of that, I say, um, you know, balance it out. So how we're just talking about that 80-20 rule, you know, each day is an 80-20 rule. So I eat 80% really clean and then 20% will be what I really want, like Oreos or, you know, cake. Um, but like I said, I'm still passing and this is going to be long term because we're looking at long term. We're not looking at short term goals. I'm the tortoise, not the hare. I'm not trying to win as fast as I can and then get distracted. What I want is that long term, you know, focus. And so I have built and teach about building the habits that are going to get you there long term. And so, uh, yeah, I don't give cheat days. I just believe in balancing out your entire day. You're, and you're, you coach. you're yeah. one of those good coaches. Yeah. You, you you put them to work. I like that. I like that. That, that discipline comes in. So what is one more? I, I know I know we're, we're, we're pressed for time, but one more principle that you're using in your business today from Thinking Grow Rich. Desire. There is nothing more powerful than the, the desire to want something. Okay? And we do this in everyday life. We, we, can, we can be driving and all of a sudden we get a craving, right? And I'm like, oh, I want a coffee. <laughs> Starbucks. <laughs> right? That desire. We need to start fueling the desires that we really, really want and actually going towards them, working towards them, staying focused towards them. And so a lot of times we will, you know, see a desire as something really, really big and really outrageous and impossible. And so instead of feeding it with small baby steps going towards it, we just crush the goal entirely. We just say that's impossible. Oh, she could, she got abs because that, you know, that's in her genetics. Well, you know, if you look at my family history, my family history is, you know, people who are obese. I'm Hispanic. I'm Hicana. So I get like the rice, the beans, the, like I get that whole background because that's where I came from. And it is your choice on what you want to feed. Do you want to feed your desires or do you want to feed your comfort? And so if you start to feed your desires and you start to see them as not as impossible but taking one step at a time and taking that motivator, like we said, so taking that tracking device, tracking it, using that 30 days as a motivator to say, hey, this is a victory for me. And every time you win, you want more. So breaking down your desire into different baby steps and then celebrating your victories. Celebrate your victories and then every victory was going to add up. And before you know it, you're going to wake up and you're going to be living the life that you were desiring all those years ago. I agree with that 100%. That discipline of, of, of having that on a daily basis and feeding it. Like, I want to say internal self-inspiration and internal self-motivator, if you have that within. So you're, you're not being pushed to do something. You're, I don't know if pull or push is the better word to use, but it's internal. You don't use anything external to push you or pull you towards that. And I think that's very, very important in business, in fitness, or anything. Anything worth having will require that. Yes. Anything worth having is going to require effort and work. Anytime it's easy, you're probably not going to get the results that you want. You will get results, and you will have, you know, a life that you love and maybe you're comfortable in. And if that's what you crave, great. But a lot of us crave more and we know we're made for more. But instead of, you know, like I said, looking at the 80% and celebrating those victories, we're looking at those 20% defeats. So we're pulling ourselves back and we're sitting in our setbacks. And as we sit in our setbacks, we continue to stay, take step backs. This is by Tim Story. This is not my quote. He has a quote that says this. So I'm not going to take <laughs> the credit for it, but he says, the longer you sit in your setback, you continue to take steps back. And I truly believe that. And the more, you know, you sit there, you stay there. But if we could flip the switch and start to focus on our positives instead of sitting in those negatives, we're going to get up. We're going to get the motivation that we need because nobody can get that for you. Nobody, no coach, no person can be your motivator. You have to decide that this desire is more than anything that you want. 
And then you hire that coach to guide you, to give you the tools to get you there faster. Because the faster that you get there, the more motivated you're going to stay. Um, and so that's all internal. That motivation is internal. But the coach aspect comes in to get you the tools that you need faster. So you don't have to go through the failures that we went through as coaches. You don't have to go through all the lessons that we had to learn. We're going to push you past all chapters one through five and get you to six faster than we got there. So that's what I believe. That is awesome. I want to thank you so much for spending this time with us. Um, it was very insightful. So I'm going to start my diet very, very soon. I'm going to start the regimen of gym every morning. I got to find a couple of buddies that we're going to go together. I don't like to go alone. So I'm one of those people. We go do it as a group versus individual. Yeah. So we could kind of, you know, push each other, pull each other, make fun yeah. of each other, do whatever. A little bit of a trash talk once in a while here yeah. and there. So that just makes it more fun. And maybe Great we'll dock in the process. <laughs> now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you on, on making a mindset shift is you just said, I'm going to start my diet soon. I'm going to start if, my diet. What if you're not going to start a diet? What if you're just going to take one aspect of your nutrition right now and either add or subtract something to it? Now so you're I not yourself. So would you go with the creamer and the coffee or no? Um, I do, but here's the thing with the creamer. There's, there's a brand called Walden's which is a zero calorie creamer. How do you spell that? W-A-L-D-E-N. Walden. And you Got can it. get it at Sprouts. You can order it online, but that is a great creamer to have. But what I love as a creamer, me personally, is almond milk and protein powder. Ah, protein powder. All right. I, I mean, I, I could try protein powder. I'm cool. Any try specific type you like? Yes. So I love the Bulletproof... Um, Collagen vanilla brand. We gotta write this down. Give me a sec. No, go for it. <laughs> also, I'm gonna forget. I wrote the creamer, but okay, go ahead. Now I'm right. Yeah. So it's the brand is called Bulletproof. And it's Got it. collagen. And it's um, the flavor is vanilla. And then you add that with um, some almond milk, shake it up. And then that becomes your creamer and your coffee with two stevias, and it's delicious. You won't miss your, your creamer at all. And then now your calories are lower so that when you are, you know, eating your food. So you really do just do that for 30 days, and you'll start to see some results. I'm all in because I do, I do, do two or sometimes three coffees. Yep. But I don't do black. I, I, I got to have a creamer in there because I can't take it black. It just yeah. doesn't taste right. So. Okay, I, so I've been looking yeah. for a solution for that, and I know the creamer that I got is not doing the job. Yeah, yeah. So uh, make your own, and that alone is going to cut like a good three to 600 calories depending on your creamer. So if that's the only thing you change in your nutrition right now for 30 days, you're already going to start to see, have progress. Done deal. Alex, thank you so much for doing that. Awesome. Hopefully we'll be in contact. I'll give you progress maybe in 30 days. You'll come and check it back in again. I'm going to document everything, report it, go online, figure this stuff out, and we'll go from there. And I'm going to tell my friends and everything else. So I appreciate okay. it. Thank you so much for taking this time and being with us. Thank you. Have a good one. Talk Bye. to you later. Bye-bye.